Welcome to the Marriage Steps program where developing a long-lasting, happy relationship is the status symbol to achieve. And following my six marriage steps is a path to help get you there. I'm your host, Dr. Wyatt Fisher, a licensed psychologist specializing in marriage counseling, coming to you live from Facebook, Monday through Thursday, 8 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. For more marriage resources or to learn more about my, my six marriage steps, be sure to go to my website, drwyattfisher.com. I'm coming to you from Colorado, and I woke up today to a foot of snow outside. I would love to see a picture of where you live and what the weather's like, so be sure to send me one. You can send it to me on Facebook or Instagram. First marriage fact of the night. Be your spouse's biggest encourager, not his or her biggest critic. Which one are you? Are you your partner's supporter or critic? If I were to record everything that came out of your mouth for a week, would the majority be supportive words or critical words? And a lot of us, if we're honest, it's critical. It's so much easier to point out the bad. Have you noticed that? It's so much easier to notice what our partner does wrong. So therefore, you have to intentionally work at looking for the good. Daily be thinking about what did they do today that was right? What did they do today that I admired? What did they do today that I appreciate? And then comment on it. The more you do that, the better your marriage will become. Second, women who report a fair division of housework were happier in their marriages than women who felt their husband didn't do his fair share. So there's a sense of fairness and equality we all have. Look at kids. The moment they think something is unfair, they will tell you, we have four kids. And the moment they think something is not fair between their siblings and them, they let us know loud and clear. Think of work. The moment you feel like you're not being treated fairly at work, you probably tell someone about it. Tell someone about it. Likewise, in marriage. In marriage, the moment we don't feel like things are fair, we get upset. It doesn't feel right. We feel taken advantage of. So this study talked about women in particular. So if they feel like they're doing more housework than their husbands, they're unhappy about that. So consider how fair do you feel like things are in your marriage. The more fair the workload, the better. The first marriage joke of the night. My friend got herself a puppy. It's so incredibly cute and playful. Unfortunately, her husband is allergic to it, so it doesn't look like it's gonna work out. If you're interested, please message me. His name is Marcel. He's 54 years old and weighs 216 pounds. (laughs) So she's getting rid of the husband and keeping the pet. Second, if you and I were on a sinking ship and there was only one life vest, I cannot express how much I would miss you. (laughs) I like that one. Okay, so the message of the night is six ways to sexually woo your partner. Two days ago, I did a message for high libido partners on how to emotionally woo your low libido partner. And tonight, I'm reversing it. Tonight, I'm speaking to low libido partners, so pay attention if that's you. And we're gonna speak on how to sexually woo your high libido partner because that's how they experience love. They experience love through the sexual because they're high libido. So low libido partners, your job daily is to be sexually wooing them, just like you want them to be emotionally wooing you. So the first tip here is the same tip I gave the high libido partners, which is you wanna build a friendship. That's the base of any good marriage, is building a friendship. And that includes time together, laughing together, having fun together, talking a lot, and making sure you're gentle with conflicts. Because in any good friendship, if there's a conflict, The friends are very careful usually with how to talk it through because they don't want to damage the relationship. You need to be doing the same with your partner. Be gentle when talking through conflicts. So that's number one is you want to build that friendship because the sexually wooing comes out of the friendship. The second tip is to consider sexually wooing your partner when you change. Your high libido partner wants to see your body because when they see your body, it's exciting for them. It's arousing for them. It satisfies them. So every time you change, whether it's getting dressed in the morning, putting on your PJs at night, getting into the shower, anytime you change your clothing is an opportunity to sexually woo your partner. 
So perhaps you just sh show some of your body. Perhaps you share all of your body, whatever you're comfortable with. Maybe it's dim lights when you change, or maybe it's bright lights. You can experiment with what you're comfortable with, but consider every time you change is an opportunity to woo your sexual, your high libido, sexually driven partner, because that's how they experience love. The third idea is every time you pass your high libido partner, consider rubbing your body against theirs your body parts against them. That is going to speak love to them because they're gonna feel like you're sexually wooing them. So maybe you grab for the fork and you rub your body parts against them. Perhaps you grab for something else or you pass them in the hall. Every time you pass them is an opportunity to rub yourself against them in a sexually suggestive way and that's gonna woo them and make them feel loved and wanted. The fourth idea to sexually woo your partner, your high libido partner, is with messages. Messages can be through texting on your phone. They can be through a message you write on your mirror. They can be something you come up and you whisper into their ear. Any format that you convey, sexually woo them through those messages. So that can be as mild as saying how good they look to you and how attracted you are to them, all the way to talking about what you want them to do to you sexually. So that depends on how comfortable you are. And that brings up another point. To a certain degree, low libido partners, when you're sexually wooing your spouse, you're gonna feel a little disingenuous because you're probably not gonna feel sexual when you're wooing them. So just start with what you feel most comfortable with. However, you also need to push up and nudge up, nudge forward a little bit out of your comfort zone because that's exactly what your high libido partner is trying to do for you. When they give you acts of kindness, when they give you affection, when they give you emotional intimacy and empathic listening, when they do all those things, to a certain degree, that's disingenuous for them because that's not their natural bent, most likely. But they're pushing and they're nudging out of their comfort zone to serve you. So likewise, get out of your comfort zone sexually to woo them. The fifth thing to consider to woo your partner is by what you wear. How much do you sexually woo your partner with what you wear? How much do you wake up every day and think, what can I put on that's gonna be really sexy for my partner? Or how much at night do you think, what can I wear to bed that's gonna be sexy for my partner? If you have a high libido partner, they would greatly appreciate you considering how you can dress sexually. So here's an example. So some people, when they get ready for bed at night, they wear something like this, jogging pants, sweatpants, you know, something that's really plain, not sexy at all. This person's not thinking about how to sexually woo their partner. They just put on what's most comfortable. This person is putting on something silky, you know, something sexy. And this person is thinking, how can I sexually woo my partner? Because high libido people tend to be visual and they love it when you dress sexually for them. So one idea is even to look through a lot of images of options for PJs or options for clothes so that you can choose together what would look sexy and what you would feel comfortable wearing. The sixth thing to consider to sexually woo your partner is with your hands. How much do you lean over and grope your high libido partner? High libido people love to be groped. Low libido people hate to be groped. So if you're a low libido partner listening to this, most likely your high libido partner would love you to grope them. So consider the next time you're around them to surprise them with some subtle or some blatant groping of their body parts, they probably would love that. So those are six ways to consider sexually wooing your partner because again, that's how they experience love. So one is build the friendship, two is when you change your clothes, Three is when you pass them, consider rubbing up against them sexually. Four is with messages, sexually suggestive messages. Five is with the clothing you wear, how sexy is it? And six is with your hands, consider groping them. Thank you for listening to the Maristeps program. Be sure to send me your, mess your marriage questions through Facebook, Instagram, or email me at info at drwyattfisher.com. If you enjoyed the program tonight, be sure to share it with your family and friends and leave a review. The Maristeps program is listener supported, so to help keep it on the air, 
please consider becoming a monthly supporter by going to patreon.com forward slash marriage steps. And remember, your marriage is alive. So if you care for it, it will grow. But if you neglect it, it will die. The choice is up to you. Take care.